The Cold War began during the end of World War II and would continue through the fall of the Berlin Wall. Traces of its impact are still felt today. It was a time when American foreign policy was simple. We swore to contain the spread of communism. Wherever it existed, we would not interfere. But anywhere communism threatened to expand, we would be the first on the scene to ensure its failure. This containment policy, that of containing communism, would take us into Korea and into Vietnam. It would also lead us to a fever pitch of anti-communism on the home front, creating an environment in which suspected radicals would be intensely persecuted. In March 1947, President Truman appeared before Congress and declared, I believe it must be the policy of the United States to support free peoples who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or outside pressures. This became known as the Truman Doctrine. If countries were being overrun with communism, we would send them money. This is also why the United States created a plan to rebuild Western Europe after the war. Partially, we were motivated by humanitarian concerns. But we were also afraid that otherwise, America might be sending money to Europe indefinitely. We wanted Europe to rebuild to the point where it would again be a market for American exports. Most importantly, the United States wanted Europe to rebuild quickly because they feared that weak and unstable governments would fall prey to communist parties, pro-Soviet interests. In order to contain communism then, to stabilize these European nations and keep them democratic, the Marshall Plan was enacted in June of 1947. The Marshall Plan provided economic assistance to all European nations that would help create a plan for European recovery. And over the next three years, the United States would channel over $12 billion of aid into Europe. The containment policy created the Marshall Plan, but also led to the development of other programs. First, the United States kept a large standing military. Second, the country pumped more money into nuclear research. By 1950, the United States had developed the even more powerful hydrogen bomb, hoping to stay ahead of the Soviet Union. Third, the United States passed the National Security Act of 1947, creating the Department of Defense to oversee all branches of the armed services and the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, to collect information on foreign affairs. Truman soon became mired in another international conflict, this time in Korea. The Korean conflict had been developing for some time. In 1945, the United States and the Soviet Union had sent troops to Korea to fight against the Japanese. But when the war was over, both the United States and Russia refused to move their troops out of Korea. The country was divided into North and South in what was supposed to be a temporary arrangement. In 1949, the Russians had finally left, after setting up a communist government with a strong army. Soon thereafter, the United States left as well, setting up a strong pro-Western but not very democratic government in its place. But when the United States left, they did not leave the South Koreans with a very strong army. North Korean nationalists were tempted by this weakness. Hoping to reunify their country, they realized it would be easy to throw out the pro-Western Southern government. And in June of 1950, the armies of communist North Korea pushed into that pro-Western half of the Korean peninsula in the south. Because of America's commitment to contain communism anywhere it might expand on the globe, we quickly entered the conflict. Truman sent limited military assistance. By September of 1950, containment was achieved. American forces had sent North Korean forces fleeing out of the South. But then Truman decided that the new goal should be the liberation of North Korea. No longer was containment enough. Now Truman wanted General MacArthur to chase after the communists in their own territory to create a peaceful, unified, democratic Korea. At first, the United States did well in this conflict. But soon, China became involved to back up North Korea. The war grew longer and more tragic. In all, 140,000 Americans were killed or wounded. The conflict dragged on to 1953, when an armistice basically returned things to where they had been before the war. The conflict also brought fears about communism within the United States to red-hot levels. This growing fear of communism within the United States would be one of the most lasting effects of the Cold War. In the post-World War II era, many Americans saw communism as a very real, very frightening threat. If 
communism had taken over part of Germany, Poland, Korea, and China, where might it end? Americans focused on stopping the spread of communism at home. The first effort in this attempt came through the highly publicized investigations conducted by the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1947. First, the committee attacked Hollywood, claiming that film producers were communists who were trying to spread communism nationwide through their movies. They called upon writers and producers to testify. And some of them were former communists. Many people in the country had been involved with the Communist Party, although that didn't mean they necessarily had wanted to overthrow the American government. Some of those who were called on refused to answer questions about their own political beliefs and those of their colleagues, and they were sent to jail for contempt. As the climate of hysteria rose, first-term Republican Senator Joseph McCarthy gained notoriety when he claimed to have a list of known communists working in the American State Department. McCarthy went even further in the weeks after his initial declaration, accusing people in almost every realm of government. McCarthyism finally died in 1954, when McCarthy went too far in his efforts by accusing Army General Robert Stevens, and the Army more broadly, of being infiltrated by communism. The American people finally turned away from McCarthyism, thinking it had gone too far.